the 14th of March 2023. Welcome everybody, I'm Dana Durnford, I'm also known as the nuclearproctologist.org. Hope you're doing fine. <clears throat> you can call in at 709 589 4406. 709 589 4406, or text me if you want me to talk about something in Pacific. <clears throat> I hope everybody had a great day yesterday and today. We're going to get on with this show. No show yesterday. I was way too burnt out from Saturday and Sunday. And I sat there until uh, 10 p.m. <laughs> and I was ready to do a show, but I just didn't have it in me. So we're going to talk about Fukushima 12th anniversary. We got a poll tonight that. articulates the reality. Should nuclear universities and the students work at the Fukushima nuclear meltdown so they can't grow up and destroy our precious Earth? This uh, would have been appropriate about 80 years ago, unfortunately. But we're going to talk about four buildings that melted down and had two reactor cores stored at the top in those pools. Uh, they are, those radio depictions up there are pools, a few, what they call fuel pools, and they store reactor cores in them. Now, they don't have a repository anywhere in Japan, let alone worldwide. And so when you, when you see all the media trying to pretend that they're in a pool that don't exist because it blew up, right? And the plume models to your left are 26 days of radioactive fallout and green appropriate because everybody's indoctrinated with the symptoms, Simpsons and and um, the color green, the Hulk and stuff like this for the nuclear industry. That, that was on purpose, right? So it's very rare to see uh, radioactive fallout actually in green, by the way. We have a lot of different models from a lot of different countries. So after 27 days, the radioactive fallout from multiple reactors and eight fuel pools that actually don't exist despite these people claiming that they do. is on top of what used to be reactor building number four. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah. this building was blown apart by... Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> okay, so... We got a whole show on nuclear headlines from the anniversary of this year. There was a couple of headlines that I found from last year, and I didn't cover them. And I know that sounds crazy because I'm so voracious. Um, I don't remember covering a couple of these headlines, so I included them also. Let's get it going, I suppose. This story is 2022, by the way. Fukushima man battles to keep the hometown on maps and in memories. This this kind of tells you this, the crazy story of this. The best way to describe nuclear industry is an uh, alien race. They might not be an alien race, but that's the best way to describe them because they don't care about any other species. Is one of the th tens of thousands of people forced to abandon their homes. It's actually, it was a half a million people. They whittle it down now to tens of thousands. Uh, when the uh, reactors at the Fukushima Diachi, now the fuel pools also melted down. They had decades of reactor cores in them. When the reactors at the Fukushima Diachi nuclear power plant suffered meltdowns, they put it with an S, which is amazing because you never see that. How sad is that that I noticed stump, stump? What the hell is a stump? 11 years on, he still can't return, but he's determined not to let his hometown fade 
from the victim's memories. I don't think it's going to fade anytime soon. Every month, he drives 100 kilometers from his evacuated housing in the old hometown of Fukushima Prefecture. Uh, 77 year old is a community leader of a Kogi, which is one of the most contaminated no go zones, difficult to return zones. This is a no go zone. Difficult to return zone is if you go in there, you're a moron. Or you're a very, very well brainwashed person. He needs to apply for government permission each time he visits, which, of course, is never denied. And he goes around with a Geiger counter that measures in uh, microceivers. And all he can find on his crappy Geiger counter that only measures microceivers, apparently, is two microceivers. This is absurdness because he's just a few miles away from multiple ongoing nuclear meltdowns. And he's in a no-go zone, which means there's infinitely more than that. So he goes around with his wands and sends the readings to the people who used to own the radioactive homes. So the media loves taking a, a village idiot and putting him on a pedestal like this. The blank space, some parts of difficult return zones have been declared reconstruction bases. Some parts of the difficult to return zone, let me repeat that, have been declared reconstruction bases in order to focus the focus of decontamination work. Uh, first off, like the poll tells the story, should nuclear university students, because they don't work at Fukushima, believe it or not, nuclear academics, nuclear scientists don't work at Fukushima or in the prefecture. So they can't grow up and destroy the earth. Should they be have to work, nuclear students, nuclear universities worldwide? Because it makes sense. Difficult to return zone is red. A yellow is reconstruction bases. So it's a nuclear wasteland. And the reconstruction bases, like the yellow, Surrounded by no-go zones, including the whole community. Surrounded by no-go zones. So if the baseball goes across the street, you can't go get it, basically. Do you get what you're looking at here? First off, it's infinitely worse than what they're showing you right there. This is so-called NAMI. This is five to seven kilometers away from the ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns. What have I got done here? <coughs> a Kogi. Now he's from there originally. Some parts of difficult to return zone have been declared reconstruction bases, and the focus is decontamination work. Uh, like you're going to go into the middle of a nuclear wasteland and clean up a little section, you don't think the radiation is going to migrate because it's airborne, right? It's airborne. That's why you're not there. It's massive. And the reactors are still melting down. <clears throat> okay. Authorities are only planning to decontaminate Pacific areas to which people plan to return. So that's what the yellow zones are. Read it and weep. The yellow zones is where they're planning on moving people back to during the nuclear wasteland that they emit to. I've got to fix my screen here. Being a sissy. Stop being a sissy screen. There we go. I think we got it under control. Normally my screens are very, very, very well behaved. <laughs> Except for tonight, obviously. <clears throat> I got a clip, uh, clip on my headphones so I don't rip them out of shit. Really important, by the way. All right, gets weirder. They're planning to decontaminate Pacific areas where victims will be tricked and manipulated into going back into. Oh, you want to move back? We'll clean out the area. You can't go across the street after. You're not allowed to stop when you leave the town until you get 
a hundred kilometers away. Don't go, don't go walking around town or crossing any streets. You'll be okay. Immediately after the nuclear accident, a government official said something that still haunts him. The government official said, you might not be able to come back here for a hundred years. If, if it was a lousy hundred years, I wouldn't be making a big fuss about it. He said, I'll release his research as a book later in the year. It'll feature 700 pages of radiation useless monitoring. They're not checking for alphas or betas or neutrons or x-rays. And the Geiger counter that he's using is suspect. What else? I guess something else gave me a problem. Hang on. Now it's the microphone stand. Now it's the microphone stand. We're getting there. Who knows how many. The old stand, because it's been around for quite a long time. It's finally getting worn out, I guess. He titled the book To Our Descendants 100 Years From Now. Do, I don't believe there'll be a generation 100 years from now because of what Fukushima has done. How crazy is that statement? Well, it's not that crazy. Once it kills the species, that means you're next. Contaminated soil piles up in vast Fukushima cleanup project. Contaminated soil piles up in vast Fukushima cleanup project. You know, all the nuclear scientists here in Canada had to get the vaccine to go back to work at the nuclear, not the nuclear scientists, but nuclear employees. <coughs> and um, it might be the saving grace for humanity after all, who knows. Contaminated soil piles up in vast Fukushima, if it kills all the nuclear scientists, it, that would be a pretty neat, appropriate thing to uh, save the planet. One of the best ways to save the planet, get them when they're young, when they're in the universities and students. Should the nuclear scum and the little monsters to be work at the Fukushima nuclear meltdown so they can't grow up and destroy the planet? <laughs> That's an affirmative. Roger that. <clears throat> Let's keep it rolling here. Conab contaminated soil piles up. There's, there's an understatement and a half. Decontamination efforts around the Diachi nuclear power plant has allowed thousands of evacuees to return to the nuclear wasteland that you can't clean up. It's not, I'm almost ashamed to be a human when I read stuff like that, eh? Not almost, but... Uh, my favorite subject, bags. A couple of bags here, a few billion, million, million bags there, here, a million there, a million everywhere, a million bags, bags and bags and millions of bags. Well, I got million bags, man, I even got my bags, man, make my big, big bags, man, sitting out here and there, man, I got... Millions of bags. I got round ones, square ones, fat ones, tiny ones, big ones, little ones, all kinds of fat ones. In the rice field, bag, 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 every bag. <coughs> Once you go down marking all of these bags, how wrong Dana is. You is wrong, Dana. You so wrong. Dana, you scammer, there's no bags. <coughs> Yo, <laughs> there's no bags, Dana. Stop lying, you fear monger. Mom, Dana's fear monger. <laughs> hey, you're probably right. I didn't see any bags. What bags? Decontamination efforts. So they got to drive past millions and millions of one-ton bags to get to their home. <laughs> Everything is safe. And I'm only laughing because I can't, when I say that, I can't picture somebody that stupid what they would actually look like, right? 
Did he have extra limbs or double two noses or what? I don't know. I don't know. I'm confused. There's still some areas off limit, but you'll be okay. Your kids will be okay. <laughs> and just don't go chasing. Uh, don't go riding across the street on your bicycles, Timmy. And as contaminated soil piles up, there's 150,000 storage points of one-ton bags of radiation. There's over 30 million, somewhere between 30 million to 60 million. So 30 million is five rows of traffic, one-ton trucks, bumper to bumper, right around the planet with a one-ton bag in the back of a one-ton truck, because that's all it can carry, right? The cleanup work started soon after the nuclear accident in March. No, it didn't. They, they didn't go near the reactors. I, I've done a six-video series. It's in my playlist of 1,900 pictures. When there's supposed to be 7,000 employees there, the, the most we've ever seen in any of the pictures was not very many, and they were wearing paper suits. So survival rate in a paper suit at a nuclear meltdown, not good at all. The cleanup work started soon after the nuclear accident, says the crazies. They just, whatever, they just say whatever they feel like. It does, the troop doesn't enter into the equation ever. The nuclear disaster discharged radioactive particles. Particles. You know, it's kind of going to be like that, are you? How's that look for particles to anybody? No? Oh, I release particles around the site, didn't it? Uh huh. This this is two of the skyscrapers, nineteen story buildings. So if you own two nineteen story buildings and you came back or someone sent you a picture like that, would you say they were destroyed or crippled? More than seventy percent of the Fukushima prefectures municipalities we're registering radiation levels above the national safety standards. So 70% of the 6,000 square miles was above the national standard. Every house in Fukushima City, 70 kilometers away, was entitled to decontamination because it was so radioactive, but they don't have the manpower. Too busy picking up bags so they can cut them open and make, uh, grow vegetables in a, in a, a no-go zone called Okuma. We're probably going to get to that, actually. Decontamination was key to making the region safe again, but that's normal. We're talking about nuclear, so don't, don't let it get you confused. It's just nuclear, just evil. They're not going to do it unless it's like, is that the evilest way we could do something? And Yeah, I think so. That's pretty evil. Let's grow food in it and the no go zone within the eyesight of the ongoing multiple reactors for sale to the population. Because, why would you do that? Well, because we can. <laughs> well, you don't, do you have to? No, of course not. Why, who the, who the friggin' the right mind's gonna go into a no go zone, use one ton bags of radioactive soil, millions of them, to grow food in for market? Why would anybody wanna do that? Well, because it makes no sense. Well, just tell them it's 8,000 becquels a kilogram. That's half a million atoms per cubic meter. 11 becquels a kilogram. Children see uh, holes in their hearts. Decontamination was key to making the region safe again. Decontamination. Millions of one-ton bags is not a decontamination when you're only... You're only cleaning up little zones where you want people to move into. The contaminated soil and waste was piling up in residential areas. <laughs> they're not residential areas when they're also nuclear wastelands. You can't call a nuclear wasteland a residential area. It used to be, maybe, but you can't call it a residential area. You got... Um, just. That's the problem with the, every anniversary they'll do this. We're looking at with all these stories, and you, all you can do is just shake your head, like you, you're numb for till you finally get through it over a couple of uh, shows, 
And it's like, wow, that was, I didn't need a calendar to, to, I only had to read the narrative to understand that we're at the university because there's always the crazies come out. And hindering reconstruction efforts. You can't reconstruct in a nuclear wasteland. So the government decided to build temporary storage facilities and land stretching across the towns of Fulaba, which is south of the, attached to the nuclear meltdowns, and Akuma, which is north. Or I'm sorry, vice versa. Which hosts a nuclear plant that occupies a 1,600 hectare site because they're just cutting open the bags and dumping it and in the far, old farm field, uh, abandoned farm fields. And now, in a no-go zone, we're not supposed to be in the first place, and growing food. Because nobody's going to say anything on us, and we're not really anybody. Nearly five times the size of New York Central Park. And so they got these trucks with one-ton bags, and they, they can basically carry six one-ton bags each. So since 2015, a thousand trucks each day shows up and dumps around 7,000 bags of soil. So there's a thousand trucks each day in Akuma and Futaba, which are about and within eyesight, a couple of kilometers of ongoing nuclear meltdowns. Oh, by the way, they got to move this out of the prefecture by 2045. Now, the bags only meant to last a couple of years. So, in the meantime, they're going to cut the bags open, dump it in the exclusion zone, the no-go zone, grow vegetables in it, because they, can't, they don't have to take it out until 2045. And so, if they're going to grow vegetables in a no-go zone for sale, what are they going to do with it in 2045? Can't... In children's playgrounds, uh, you know, what, where would you put it to make it even more eviler? Because that's about it, is it? Schoolyards and stuff like that, probably. I bet you think I'm kidding, don't you? Ah, uh, give your head a shake when it falls off. Give it a kick. The Environment Ministry says workers have moved almost 13 million cubic meters to the nuclear wasteland. Warms my heart that evil still exists, eh? The government introduced a law requiring the soil to be moved out of the prefecture by 2045. So by then they're finished growing food in it. And so what, what should he do with it? You know, this 20-something years of growing food. Then he put it in playgrounds for schools, I guess. I can't come up with anything else. To, because it has to be evil. It can't be something sensible like in a repository for a million years. That's not going to happen. No, we're going to go into the no-go zone, grow food, because we're nuclear, and nuclear is best shit as it gets. It doesn't get any more best shit crazy than nuclear industry. The art of stupid, right? The, but the people of Fukushima, especially those who used to live near the site, are worried it'll become a permanent fu fixture. The reactors are going to be melting down for the next 10,000 years. You're worried about, you think you're getting back to your town? Well, they like you to go back. Little sections are opened. Not allowed to cross the street or nothing, but they're open. There's a concern this will become a final disposal site. I understand that it's inevitable that people will have to accept nuclear wasteland. So in a bid to reduce the overall amount of nuclear waste... Crews are sorting the waste at a facility where you, you can't, crews can't, this is not like bottles, you can't have crews, not academics. Well, if it is nuclear scientists, we won't have to worry about the nuclear industry destroying the future, right? So should the nuclear universities and the monsters to be, aka students, to go to work at the Fukushima nuclear meltdowns so they can't grow up? And destroy humanity and the 8 million species. I think I'm being reasonable. Like, think about it. It's not a bad idea. Because when they get, they might be kids right now, but when they get educated, get their nuclear degree, they're, they're out to murder and slaughter you. It is hoped that some of the soil can be reused. It is hoped. 
Uh, they developed technology, apparently, to grow food in a nuclear wasteland. Dana, technology, here they are, developing technology to allow to reuse contaminated soil in a nuclear wasteland. So it's not like they're going to do it. They love you so much. This is a NAMI barricade. I've showed that picture a lot, right? That picture's been around for a while. Barricades are set up around a difficult to return. A, it's a no-go zone. There's no such thing as a difficult to return. That's a no-go zone. You can't fix radioactive fallout. You just can't. It can't be done. Now, one of the former residents of Futaba has returned to live in the nuclear wasteland full time. Well, that kind of gives you a bit of hope that people, not everybody, is brain dead, eh? The central and local government are hoping they can attract new victims to the area and are offering a lousy $17,000 for your soul if you move back there. So if you think your world life is only worth 17000 you should move there. And if you're a nuclear student, you only got to live there for five years, and uh, then you can leave. So it's worth your time. For those former residents undecided about returning, safety concerns, safety concerns. They want to know if the demolition, decontamination work will be completed and the soil will be removed. Removing soil don't make it safe in a nuclear wasteland. So it shows you how I use the word complacent because it's better than saying stupid. Barely, but it's better. They also want more clarity about the decontamination work at the um, disease factory known as Fukushima Daiichi, perpetual disease factory. The government has promised that will be completed by 2051, give or take a couple thousand years. 7,000 trucks today heading to a farmer's field near you. <laughs> it's coming. They're coming for you. Uh, there's, there's a couple of pictures that really tells this story. Buy her with me. So, just to give you a concept of how actual batshit crazy they actually are in real life, I, I, I got the perfect way. Just stay with me. Uh -huh. uh, there we go. Voila. They're growing food right alongside a one-ton bags of radiation. And that picture, and that picture from the media saying, why are people spreading rumors about the farmers in Fukushima product being radioactive? The farmers got to make a living too, even if it is a genocide, because that's genocide. That's pictures of genocide right there. There's no way not to get sick and die from eating that. It's impossible. New businesses bloom in disaster hit Fukushima. Oh, you're getting top dollar. You get top dollar. You get long time top dollar. Get top dollar for his flowers. He was growing food within a couple of years. And then he decided to switch to flowers, radioactive flowers. 2,000 people forced to leave NAMI. It's getting a bit of a loving lady. They want people to move back, right? His farmland is just 7 kilometers from multiple reactor cores and 8 fuel pools that melted down. Okay, wait for it. You won't be disappointed. He's as stupid as they come to it. Eh? When people return to the town to clean up their homes and visit graves, which is a serious mistake. You hear me talk about it, you can't go back to visit the graves. Well, you can if you don't mind getting radioactive. He started growing flowers in Fukushima three years after the multiple reactors melted down and eight fuel pools blew up. 
It was lonely, Start. He said, even when the authorities fully lifted the evacuation orders on 20% of the town, 20% of the nuclear wasteland, including his farm, in, in a nuclear wasteland. He's so proud of himself too, eh? Including his uh, disease factory known as a farm. Population of NAMI is only 10% of what it used to be, which is uh, terrifying. Especially when young people to come and succeed into the nuclear wasteland, he said. He ships out over 200,000 orders a year. And But what's the point to making money when your health is going to get wrecked and people where these flowers are to are getting radiated? Our goal is to succeed as murderers and encourage more vicious scum from outside the area to come to the nuclear wasteland. It built a reputation for high quality products, all kinds of flowers, and nobody will officially confirm who grew them when they're sold. Helps his flowers can emulate his success and turn a town that was so recently uninhabitable into a symbol of revival in the nuclear wasteland because he's making a lot of money. So 200,000 orders is not going to be a dollar an order. Right? So he's making a million dollars a year on flowers. And he's giddy with uh, income, but ultimately, ultimately he'll influence people to go there and do the unthinkable. A Fukushima hometown revival. Kono Hiroshi is one of the tens of thousands, again, diluting the numbers, right, who were forced to abandon their homes after the multiple reactors melted down, eight fuel pools detonated and melted down. Twelve years on, he's still set to return to the nuclear wasteland, but it looks like he faces a lonely existence. He's going to be in the Yushima district of the Nami town. Remember, the other guy was in a different section, right? His century-old home was renovated last December as it had fallen into disrepair while vacant in the district of Nami, nuclear wasteland. He had been living in disaster accommodation Kori Yama. Kori Yama is a nuclear wasteland. That should have been evacuated. I can't remember the population. There are uh, 300,000 people. But it's huge numbers acknowledged of just cesium. And cesium, you would do a mathematical extrapolation for all the other isotopes. Okay, so his, there's small pockets, including where his house is located, where decontamination work is allowing... Uh, morons to return. In other areas, people can visit their homes but are not allowed to stay overnight. So you can see his house is one of those yellow zones. Surrounded by a brutal no-go zone. You can't cross the street or anything else. You can't breathe the air. And so this is one of the most bizarre things conceivable. So his house is in the middle of a no-go zone. Like what they what they admit to is it's hardly unusual to have them to admit anything like this. It's not a picture we see very often. High radiation levels persist in some of the evacuation zones described as difficult. It's not some of them. <laughs> You know, the radioactive fallout really did happen. And let me just copy paste that somewhere where I can find it some other day. So, this was the 12th anniversary. This is uh, seven videos for the 12th anniversary dedicated to the 12th anniversary. It's a terrible anniversary. 
I always think about that Al Jazeera report where you can hear the translator literally trying not to cry as the Prime Minister was warning the country. The Japanese Prime Minister appeared on TV to put into play a plan they'd rehearsed for years. We will secure the safety of the people of Japan and in order to minimize the damage, the government will make every effort possible. And we ask the people of Japan to continue to be cautious and vigilant and keep tuned in to the reports on the television and radio. And we ask the people of Japan to act calmly. While that was all happening in the northeast of Japan, Tokyo, the capital further south, was feeling it as well in yeah, the buildings were rocking. Okay, let's keep it rolling here. But in small, specially designated areas, zones, intensively, intensive decontamination is underway. Evacuation orders were lifted in some of those pockets, you know, the little yellow spots. So whoever's doing that, they should get the death penalty in Japan, right? Evacuation orders were lifted in some of the pockets. Anybody who sat in silence in the nuclear industry should be forced to work at Fukushima too. If that, you know, the world should have vehemently went to war against that kind of ideology where you're going to send people into a no-go zone surrounded by massive radiation with no regard for you whatsoever. Just completely meant to pretend the nuclear industry wasn't as bad as it is. Oh, well, people, they'll see, you'll see, they won't, very rare to see a map like that. That's extraordinary to see a map like this. It's probably one of the most important maps you'll ever see. Because the yellow zone is where they're going to move people back to. In the middle of a no-go zone. If that's not an alien race, what is? And worldwide, the alien race sat in silence, and not necessarily silence, but they come out and told propaganda constantly to all their friends, all their families, all their loved ones, if they're teaching to all the students for generations, and that's what they do for a living. They lie to you for a living. Incredible education. So, like, so why would they lie to me? It just seems incredible, incredulous that somebody would lie to you, right? Of such a big lie. But you'll be wrong. Intensive decontamination. You can't intensively decontaminate a fraction of a nuclear wasteland. It's immediately, because everything is airborne. You can't just scoop everything out of the air and put up barriers to stop the air from recontaminating the, the couple of inches of topsoil that you scraped up, which is just a fraction of the topsoil that's there, by the way. And you can't decontaminate the forest or anything like that. And the list goes on and on. It goes down into the soil, becomes radioactive pollen, and in this case, after 12 years, it's permeated into the sidewalks, into the streets, into the infrastructure. You're not only breathing it, right? You can't avoid it. There's, it's impossible to avoid it. There's no, you can't have water. You can't have, um, can't create an, a safe environment where you're not ingesting constantly the worst case scenario where you're permeated permanently. Um, it's despicable, really, right? It's, it's not a lack of judgment. It's, it's just pure evilness. We were forced to make so many decisions in such a short time. It has been very difficult because he respects everybody's decisions including those who chose not to come back and poison their loved ones. But uh, he's probably one of the stupidest people you would ever meet. He's literally a, the definition of a moron. If it, it, his picture should be in the dictionary, and encyclopedia is for moron. He's an actual, real-life moron. A ray of hope. So Shumi uh, Tushima has laid empty a group of students from a nearby Miyagi nuclear wasteland, by the way. Miyagi is a hot zone, the whole prefecture. And met with Kono and asked him to teach them the rice planting dance 
before it faded for memory. So there's lots of morons to go around. But so that's a, a moron cult, right? Where you're you've been brainwashed your whole life. You're incapable of uh, critical thinking skills. One of the students was Kono Monutbi, who's 20 years old, was born in Tushuna. Fascinated with the dance since childhood, she wants to keep the... I and Blessed her heart, but that's the wrong place to do it, is what I'm saying, right? I don't be little... I shouldn't be little people because they've been denied an education all their life. But it really gets to me, the harm that they're going to do. And they're, they're propping up the nuclear industry by participating in this uh, circus, is what you can really call it. She's a student at Gakun University, figures. She studied under a folklore expert. Great. She's the one I want to go to to get information from. Who helped her launch it as a special project. Yeah, you can count on the professor. Screw you over. It's among less than 10 residents planning to move back to Tushima this spring. It was once home to 1,400 victims. And there's the stupidest person there by far. He's actually stupid. He's not uneducated, he's just stupid. He still believes in his community because that's what a moron does. Someone might pass by and say, oh, you're back. Can I come and visit with my family? Can I bring my children to the nuclear wasteland to see the moron? That's what I want to happen, he said. I'm happy if it makes them want to return to the nuclear wasteland, not once a year, but twice a year, or even once a week, bring your little children in there and get them sick and poisoning yourself included, and get sick and fucking die. Excuse the die part. He looks out over his deserted nuclear wasteland, and he's just, his brain is like there's a hamster there having a snack and a snooze running in his brain. <laughs> Fukushima victims feel left out. They feel betrayed, right? Government abandoned the people of Fukushima when they needed the most. Well, they were never there. Go, there is no government. You gave jobs away to people that hate your guts and is willing to sell your soul for $17. Magnitude f an hour. 5.1 offshore earthquake occurred near Hokkaido again. So we're expecting a big earthquake right now around Fukushima each year around this date. I think the last year was uh, the 16th, wasn't it? So in two days' time, th Thursday. And the year before was on 14th, two days, three days after Fukushima. They, they cost $5 billion worth of damage all the way to Tokyo, but, but didn't hurt the fragile reactors. They hurt everything else. So, say the Stumper Reactor 3, cause that's what it actually looks like. So, they, they, uh, they built this contraption over the stump. Wait for it. And they pretend it looks like this. I know, because I'm just like them. I went there and checked it out myself. Look at me. If I could do it, anybody else can do it. So that's the, where a huge dome is being constructed over the fuel pool that doesn't actually exist. That's the official story, and they're sticking to it. So shut up, Al-Qaeda. Mom Dana's being Al-Qaeda again. So they're pretending they're way above the fuel pools, which are at the very top of the building that doesn't even exist. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So you're 140 feet above the wreckage. And now it looks like that, not like this. So make up your mind, because they're both the same official pictures. 
The Epic Center at 72 kilometers, 45 miles down, or 45 miles southeast of Kashiro, and at a depth of 29 miles. Now, what's really unique about that? Look at that and see if you can come up on your own. What's unique about that? What is unique? Why is Dana making a big friggin' fuss over a sentence that says the Epic Center was 45 miles southeast of a community and it was 29 miles deep? Because you'll never see that information if the earthquake is off Fukushima or Futabar or Kuma or whatever or Nami or something like that. No way. They'll give you latitude and longitude. But for everywhere else, it's 45 miles so southeast of this community and it's 29 miles deep. And that is, you see that worldwide where they won't, if there's an earthquake somewhere else in the world, there's blah, blah, blah miles away from this city and south, southeast of this city and it's 20, 30, 40 miles deep. But when it's off Fukushima, it's a latitude and longitude only. Bah. Local firm turns uh, veggie waste into eco straw. You guessed it, minima soma. Oh, minima soma. Let me see if I can get that brought up for you. I got no idea. Bear with me. Oh, yeah, there's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Local firm turns veggie waste into eco straw in Minima Soma. Originally from Nagano, which is a nuclear wasteland, by the way. He started the business in Minima Soma. Uh, uh, started the business in Minnesota in 2018, which is a nuclear wasteland, 20 million becquels a kilogram is in the soil, and he moved from Tokyo, hoping to launch a business with benefits society. Well, this is not going to benefit society. How is that going to benefit society? Uh, while living in an area affected by multiple nuclear meltdowns. So, well, I want to move where the multiple nuclear meltdowns are to and start a business. Yeah, but honey, there's multiple nuclear meltdowns. That's okay. I want to move there. Um, smart. M-A-R-T, smart. You've been actively hiring locals. More than half of his 20 employees actually live in the nuclear wasteland itself. I'm shocked. You got to get people to come into the nuclear wasteland to get a paycheck. You naughty, naughty, subhuman species creature, you. That's what I mean, the pro-nuclear like aliens, right? Because they hate everybody and all the species the same. There's nothing personal, they just hate you. Living in an area affected by the accident. Living in an area affected by the accident. Each day, three tons of radioactive vegetable waste, like tomato leaves and broccoli stems, arrive at the factory. And that the company buys the scraps from the local supermarkets and farms <laughs> in a nuclear wasteland. This stuff is gold, isn't it? I want to create a society of morons where people and animals and the planet can all live in radioactive harmony. We can all die a miserable existence from misery radioactive machines. Living in an area affected by the nuclear meltdowns at the Fukushima Daiichi. Does that qualify as old shit? That's stupid. We, we gotta start doing this Fukushima Idiot Award each year where we we send these people trophies or something for being the, the stupidest people we've ever come across when we talk about nuclear. I think that's a great idea. 
But we're going to need a lot of trophies. We're probably going to need a couple of 100,000 or so. Because we sure as frick cover a lot of these people each year. Earth Festival planned to boost reconstruction efforts in the nuclear wasteland. Yeah, they never disappoint on the anniversary, do they? The committee is planning to exhibit sculptures for one and a half months in Futaba, the actual nuclear... See, you can look at the sculpture, and then in the window alongside of it will be the nuclear meltdowns hemorrhaging radiation. Well, uh, the world is just can't get any more screwed up than it already is, I don't think, can it? In the towns of Futaba. I actually had to go take a nap when I'd done that story. I was like, okay, I give up. I just give up. <laughs> I can't read another story like that today. Is there already, like, getting this far into the show? is like, oh, God, here. Uh, it never ends, right? It's just one more on after. Yeah, no. I'm totally stupid. I'm going back to the nuclear wasteland. But it's a nuclear wasteland. Yeah, but I watched The Simpsons. He drives around with a fuel rod in his hood, for creek's sakes. I'm not worried about no fallout. We like to revive Fukushima with the power of art, said the moron, the head of the Fukushima Festival Organizing Committee. My God, how stupid. You got to go past 30 million one-ton bags. What's that in the bags? Ah, don't worry about that. Uh, stop, stop being a silly ninny. We like to see the local people making good efforts as dots. That's about the point of it, really. That's what the government, the nuclear industry, sees you basically as a dot. Actually, a bean. They see you as a bean. Not something that grows, but a bean. Something they can count. And art as lines and connect them together. I apologize for reading you something so stupid. I didn't write it. Remember that. Don't send your hate mail to me. I didn't write it. The events are set to bring further enthusiasm in the nuclear wasteland for the festival. We're going to have the festival in the nuclear wasteland. Two kilometers away from ongoing multiple nuclear reactors and eight fuel pools that blew up and caught fire and caught fire and blew up. And are still melting down, still hemorrhaging radiation, and everything is a nuclear wasteland. Sounds perfectly normal if you're an alien, I suppose. In late August, Sugar traveled to a farm in Iwaki in the prefecture to look for food ingredients this he's going to use as his open-air restaurant. See, you thought I couldn't top the last one, didn't you? <laughs> you don't know me that good. I'll have a good look at Fukushima and see what I can do, he said. Iwati is a nuclear wasteland. So you're going to go to the nuclear wasteland and look for ingredients to use at the restaurant. I got nothing here I can bash my head with, so I've got to keep reading, I suppose. It is expected to command high prices during the Christmas season and year-end and New Year holiday because people are complacent. The name was chosen for more than 17,000 entries. <laughs> and you thought I couldn't top the last one, didn't you? There are 17,000 morons out there that entered the contest, which is reassuring if you're a moron because you know you're not alone anyway, right? The logo designed based on a voice from experts, a creative director hailing from Koryama in the prefecture. Koryama is a nuclear wasteland. I'll tell you how bad uh, Koryama. I can. I have one story there that it just defies any kind of rationale, and I save it specifically for moments like this. And and I'm gonna have. I'm going to bring that up. Just for you, because you guys are special. You guys are special and smart. M A R T, you're smart too. I got this story for you. You yeah, I love this one. Nothing says best shit crazy quite like this story, that's for sure. Mm 
Koryama City, the place I'll never visit. You could drag me in there. I was surrounded by millions and millions of one-ton bags. All right, here we go. Elementary school in Japan. I'm going to put this on the big screen because you won't believe me. you got to be able to read yourself, I'm pretty sure. 2013, that an elementary school in Japan is using water bottles to shield the students from the radiation outside. Unfortunately, the inside is massively radioactive too, but let's not confuse anybody. Bear with me. An elementary school in Koryama City, the same Koryama we were just talking about, coincidentally, which is located in the Fukushima Prefecture, 34 miles, 34 miles west of the disease factory known as Fukushima Diachi Nuclear Power Plant, is using water bottles to shield radiation coming from the courtyards and other areas around the school building itself. The bottles are filled with water and placed inside the square boxes that are stacked around the classroom. And try making that up. According to the school, it seems to have reduced the radiation levels inside the school by one third. Just God bless the nuclear industry for giving us water bottles because obviously everything on earth was created by the nuclear industry, right? You wouldn't exist if it wasn't for nuclear power plants. You know that, right? They only keep you around because you pay the, the bills. So they're stacking these boxes in outside and inside the school. To shield children from the radiation out in the garden. That they're only measuring gamma, by the way. Uh, we don't want to scare the kids with the betas, the alphas, the neutrons, the x-rays. So why don't you tell them about the gamma? <clears throat> la, 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 la. And if you think that I'm kidding, you're awesome. Using water bottles to shield the radiation coming from the courtyards, placed inside the square boxes in st stacked around the classroom. And I'm pretty proud of myself. According to the school to reduce the radiation, residents of Koryama City have been concerned about the high amount of radioactive material found around the town. Koryama City found around the town. So if you go to the United Nations Scientific Committee on the effects, which are, these are unscrewed, they're just degenerate scum, but let's use them anyway. They only measured cesium. And in Koryama City, a population of 340,000 was 162,000 Beckwells a square meter of just cesium. So the solution then was to put bottles around the schools so the children, but this Beckwells, which is uh, 162,000, are physical atoms floating around pulsing energy every second. So the bottles won't protect you from breathing it in, but they'll protect you a little bit from the pulsing. But the better solution is to, yeah, move away. We got a poll. We got a poll. Bah. Bah. Should nuclear universities and students work at... Well, let me try that again. I don't think I've done it proper that time. Should degenerate nuclear, pro-nuclear universities and monsters to be a.k.a. students, work at the Fukushima nuclear meltdown so they can't and don't grow up and destroy Earth. Oh, I, I, I like the idea myself. 
I like that idea myself. Where does it stop, though, is the question. Back to that other story. Uh, where are we to here? Because Coriyama City is outside the evacuation zone, but it's actually not, is it? And school lunches are tested. Parents are concerned because they're not able to find out where the food is coming from. And uh, they give the food, the Fukushima rice, to the children because it's important to share the pain, apparently. The government has barely conducted... Now, every house in Koryama City is entitled to be decontaminated. So back to the other story, was created with a wish to bring happiness to people's mouth. The logo design on the voice of picking food, they were talking about from Iwati City. 14 farmers have grown a variety of uh, six hectares of land. The total haul is expected to be a modest 18 tons. So the strawberries will be sold only in Fukushima Prefecture. So just feed the radioactive people radioactive food. Makes sense. Why didn't I think of that? We like to launch a full-scale sales of the strawberries at home and abroad for the next fiscal year. As a high price original brand radioactive strawberry, just as with our prefecture's premium rice uh, brand rice, Fuku Wari. This is a Yuchibori, which is known as laughing. Uh, fu Fuku Wari is known as laughing something. I can't remember. It translates to laughing. Laughing food or something like that. I wonder who picked that name out. And Yuchi Bori is, um, he's over the top on scumbag levels. He uh, flattened lines the, the markers. Heat pump market size is projected to reach 132 billion by 2031. So a heat pump, anybody can do that with their home. So it's like, it's like uh, geothermal, right? Well, it is, I guess, geothermal, where you're bringing up a bit of heat and you're breaking the temperature in your home, for instance, in the wintertime, right? So you can maintain the temperature in your home at 65 or something like that, just below what's considered comfortable, uh, eight, you know, 70 degrees or something, or maybe 60 degrees. So you, you can do that pretty cheap. I'll think you'll get your money back anyway from that investment. So that market is expected to reach $132 billion by 2031. That's amazing. Geothermal has really taken off, right? 12 years on, TEPCO to start nuclear debris removal in uh, 2023, this year. So they're claiming there's 800 tons of fuel debris remaining in reactor 1, 2, and 3 nuclear reactors. Um, the lowest number, confirmed numbers, would be around, because if you didn't have all the assemblies in the reactor, was around 500 plus tons. These reactors uh, are big reactors for their time. They were, they, were, they were pretty big reactors. Combined, they were the biggest producer, I think, for a um, six reactors. They were all big reactors. Your pure uranium, pure plutonium. Reactor three was pure mixed oxide fuel, which shouldn't exist. It's not supposed, that's never, was never supposed to exist. And the emissions from a nuclear uh, fuel pool or a nuclear meltdown, Fuel pools are still splitting the atoms into your community, into your uh, biosphere. So the same amount of atoms it took to boil water for a million homes each day to power them, they're still splitting the same atoms. And that boils the water off and goes up those tall, thin stacks. And that's why most nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms right up to the reactors. But don't go on the farm and take a picture because they'll arrest you. Terrorists, that's terrorist stuff. 
Fuel debris is a mixture of nuclear fuel reactor structures melted, which is what they call a curium, as a consequence of the triple meltdown, when it should be meltdowns with an S. And it should be four because reactor four was just doing uh, fuel maintenance and, and the other maintenance they do at the same time. And so they never take more than half the fuel out of the reactor. But the top of the reactor buildings had two pools in each one, and each pool had decades of reactor cores that were still active. That's why they're in a pool. TEPCO plans to start to, in the number two reactor, right, this is about number two reactor. Normally I got a picture of the reactors in my fingertips. Oh, imagine that. Like you say, I still got a ways to go to recover from the heart attacks. Another month or something. So this was reactor two. This is one of the only buildings that appear to remain intact on the outside. On the inside, it's they caught fire. It blew up. It blew panels out of it, and that's why you see the emissions escaping. It burned continuously for several days. And then it went China syndrome down into the earth and hit the water table where it split the earth in at least six places on the site. And the steam that's coming out of the ground is 10 sieverts an hour, but you can only see it in, in certain conditions, right? And that's why you don't see nuclear scientists or nuclear academics or nuclear corporations or, or nuclear students or anybody else there. Should nuclear universities and students work at the Fukushima nuclear meltdown so they can't grow up and destroy Earth? That's such a great poll, isn't it? Yeah, that's one of my better ones. Pretty proud of that one. I like the other ones. They were pretty good, but that one's really special. Aiming to collect one or two tiny debris grains. So instead of... When you say start debris removal work on a trial basis in the second half of fiscal 2023 at the number two reactor, the United Kingdom and, and the crazies in Japan have built this robotic arm just to get a few grains. So think of a grain as like a grain of rice. So the robotic arm is not meant to decommission the reactors or get the fuel out of the pool, the 880 tons they're claiming. It's infinitely more than that, just in the reactor cores. And so the complete misrepresentation, start the nuclear debris removal, they're not doing that. They're just getting a couple of grains out. But that's, the, that's how propaganda works. Because oh, a couple of years' time, people will say, well, I read an article they're taking the fuel out of a, a reactor 2 in 2023, Dana. Grains. Grains. Like the brain size in a nuclear, pro-nuclear, is the size of a grain, right? 12 years on, Fukushima farmers are developing local specialties. Local specialties, March 8, 2023. Nearly 12 years after a catastrophic event for all species and humanity's future, farmers in the nuclear wasteland itself are developing local radioactive specialties, defying lingering reputational damage. Lingering reputational, reputational damage. Rep, rep, reputational damage. Huh. Reputational damage. My oh my oh my. Silly little reputational damage. Re reputational damage, Dana. Oh, okay. So here's one model of radioactive fallout based on 19.5 days in the bottom corner. So after 19.5 days, the whole planet is covered in radiation. I'm currently right there with my tip of my finger is too. But everybody down here is immune to radiation, Dana. 
I don't think it hurt us. It's salt in our diet or something. Defying lingering reputational damage. So if you can contaminate the whole planet at 19.5 days, how bad is the radioactive prefecture going to be? It's going to be catastrophic, Dana. Yes. Well done. 12 Fukushima municipalities restarted agricultural production. They never stopped, folks, first off. After being forced to suspend, suspend farming due to evacuation orders. If you're evacuated, you don't go back. Meltdowns, there's no S. According to the prefectural government, according to the crazies, crop planting was suspended in 17,298 hectares of farmland in the 12 municipalities, or 14% of the prefecture's farmland at the end of 2011. The end of 2011. 14% of the farmlands of 17,000, which meant that if you took and that works if you done a mathematical equation you ended up with 123,000 acres and I forget that equation now what did I do Seven point one. So there's a hundred and six thousand didn't shut down farms. Is that what it was? Let me go back here. Uh, yeah, there's a hundred th over a hundred thousand hectares of farmland didn't shut down because that's fourteen percent, right? So when you do the math, that meant they continue to grow food. On the rest of on um, seventy four or did I say fourteen percent? Eighty six percent of the land they continue to grow food in. Eighty six percent. Demons, eh? Actual real life demons. And I shot. Let me quantify that. I'm a sucker for punishment anyway. Oh, luck would have it. I'm right there. What's the odds? Probably the only time that's ever happened in all the years of doing this. So if you march across the prefecture, if you use UNSCLEAR, URPA's uh, United Nations Scientific Committee for the Effects on Atomic Radiation, deviation of reality by only talking about gamma, you can see all the communities in that row there. So, you got all these communities, like Fukushima City at 230,000 becquels a kilogram or a square meter of gamma is a ludicrous uh, to, to suggest that's all that is there, right? You can't exclude alphas, betas, neutrons, and x-rays, for goodness sakes. So when you start looking at all of these communities, you can't grow food there or live there. You're not supposed to breed the air in any of those communities. Um, you're simply not supposed to breed deer in those communities. <laughs> bad. Bad. So 17,298 hectares of farmlands in the 12 municipalities is only 14%. So the other 86%, they were growing food. Of the Fukushima farmland at the end of 2011. So they kept growing food and shut everything down by the end. Uh, not everything, but the 14%. So they shipped all of that to Canada because Canada had no restrictions. Cropping was resumed in 40% of the areas where the planting had been suspended. So now the number is obviously a lot higher. 
As of March of 2022, thanks to the infrastructure development and work to decontaminate the areas affected by the radioactive fallout from the nuclear scumbag event. Well, they, they built it in a earthquake-prone zone and in and a tsunami-prone zone, prone zone. So it was guaranteed to happen, see? Progress has been noticeable in municipalities where evacuation orders were lifted early, such as the towns of Hirona, Naraha, which we covered years ago, but we haven't covered recently, where the resumption rate stood at 77% and 66%, respectively. Towns of Hirona and Naraha. These are no-go zones, nuclear wastelands. There's a lot of them in there. Don't worry, they'll, they'll get someone to move back. They'll pay them 17000 to move back. Twelve years on, residents returned slowly after lifting of evacuation orders in a nuclear wasteland known as Okuma. Okuma is to the south, two kilometers south of multiple ongoing nuclear meltdowns. That's a great place to raise your family, says the nuclear industry. Only a small number of residents has returned to their nuclear wasteland after the nuclear massive disease factory spewed uh, extinction into the environment. Since 2017, the government has designated reconstruction base of the government. Some batshit lunatic crazy has designated reconstruction bases difficult return zones or areas exposed to constant high levels of radiation in six towns and villages. In a difficult return zone or areas exposed to high level of radiation, which means apparently means nothing to nobody anymore. Only one out of the 82 registered residents returned to the nuclear wasteland, Kasuru, after evacuation order was lifted in June last year. It was always that crazy, you know, and every town got one. The towns of Okuma and Fuba, which hosts the Tokyo Electric Disease Factory, at a triple reactor meltdown, where's the S2? It's meltdowns. Have had 36 returnees and, and eight fuel pools melted down. Returnees and about 60 returnees in their respective reconstruction bases. They're bragging. That's what that's. They're bragging that there's. Right? There's, they're guaranteed to find someone stupid enough to believe the lie, right? Oh, yeah, you can go back. It's like a banana. I'm a nuclear scientist. Why would I lie to you? Don't listen to Dana Durnford, though. Part of the Fukushima NAMI to exit evacuation order. Exit. It's such a weird way to frame that narrative. You know, that came right out of the nuclear industry's lobbying, right? They, they sent it to the media. The media put their name on it or not a, nothing at all and printed it to get a kickback for being a scumbag, right? Part of the food, part, 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 it's 3% of the town. So 3% of the food bar, you, you, you can't go across your garden. You can't go, you, you got to stay in your house, rather. So when you drive there, you have to get out of the car and run into your house. And you can't come out until you're ready to get in your car and drive away again. But now your car is going to be radioactive forever, so it doesn't matter. Imagine how evil you are that you allowed people to do something like that. Oh, yeah, no, you, you can move back to 3% of the town. It's only nuclear. Don't stare at Medusa. Reactor 3 is not that far away. A vice foreign minister calls for thorough IAEA, the International Degenerate Scum from UN, the bigger scum, review, and they got Raphael Grossi there. Review of Fukushima discharges. Someone should discharge Raphael Grossi, really. They like shove him up an elephant's butt or something. According to Seoul's... Well, we shouldn't do stuff. Be cruel to elephants, I suppose. According to Seoul's foreign ministry on Wednesday, he held a meeting with the degenerate, monstrous scum, the demonic demon, Raphael Grossi on Tuesday in Austria, because he's afraid to come to Canada, releasing Fukushima radioactive water won't cause harm. 
by scum, scummus, and scummer bags. Japanese authorities, aka scumbags, Yakuza without the tattoos, are preparing to release treated radioactive wastewater into the Pacific Ocean. Do you really think they haven't that they're not constantly hemorrhaging radiation into the ocean? Is there actually anybody gullible enough on the planet that thinks that the ocean is not destroyed already? Do tell. This was a German model after six years. But the German model is forgetting the big picture. Well, I'll show you what the big picture is. Not because I want to, not because it's easy, but because it's the right thing to do. <sighs> Wait for it. What are you going to use this time? Well, let's use Francis' model. This is Francis' model of radioactive follow after 16 days. So that's day, uh, ooh, that's 16 days right there. Well, 15 days. <coughs> uh, uh, that's blown up. Covering the entire planet. So all the oceans, all the fresh water, all the continents. And the plume doesn't stop. It's not like, okay, that's as far as I'm going. How about you? No, it's... Uh, at first glance, releasing the radioactive water into the ocean is like a terrible idea. Green, Greenpeace, Greenpeace, Greenpeace! Didn't show you that. And and I tweeted it to him repeatedly, by the way. They didn't definitely didn't show you that. Greenpeace... See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. And so there's a lot of stories where they're pretending they're going to dump water into the ocean. I got multiple videos in my playlist to show you the absurd, a ridiculous, an obscene amount of documentation that says we already killed the Pacific. <laughs> Case in point, watch my video, my last video. Watch the first part of it, and then you'll actually understand it after that. Rice in the low-carbon plastic. None of you scream stupid quite like this one. Bringing hope to a struggling nuclear wasteland. We know what it should be in NAMI. March the 9th this year. He grins as he watches diggers work in earth near his rice field, known as are returning still more fields to productivity after Fukushima nuclear reactors exploded and sprayed the area with radiation. Sprayed the area? Sprayed, sprayed the planet, I think you meant. Obviously, you're confused. But hey, what worries me is uh, there's an endless amount of these people out there that the industry can quote. Even better, Abe knows the rice that he and the cooperative grows will have a steady buyer. Nami, he's still struggling to recover, has a new hope a venture that turns rice unsellable for consumption due to health worries and the low carbon plastic used by children. I kind of lose all touch with reality when you're doing this sometimes. Reborn as low carbon plastic cutlery and takeout containers. <laughs> radioactive cutlery and radioactive takeout containers for restaurant changes and plastic bags and souvenirs. Nothing really shocks me anymore. That's the crazy thing about this story. It amazes me. I guess it does shock me. It never stops shocking me. Without growing radioactive rice, the town can't survive. Well, you're not supposed to be in a nuclear wasteland, my friend. If you want to kill yourself, good for you, but don't take everybody with you. It's disappointing that people like that can actually speak and write and talk. The rice on cell is confusing to me, really. The race unsellable due to rumors. 
<laughs> the roamers. Total rumor, Dana. Yeah, of course it is. I'm on the wrong side. I, I should be pro-nuclear. I'd be really good at pro-nuclear, I think. Uh, that's not true. I don't have the guts to be a pro-nuclear. I don't know how to lower myself to that kind of level. Pro-nuclear, Dana. Imagine me coming out and saying, actually, Fukushima's okay. <laughs> Can you imagine? <clears throat> They could be here with a gun to my head and I'd still try to drop them right on the spot. Look them in the eye. When they blink, punch them out. Neptunian 239 dispersal uh, covering the northern hemisphere. That's ah, just plutonium named after the devil. Nothing to worry about here. <coughs> But don't worry, ground zero is fine. Come on back to NAMI. We got to grow rice for cutlery and takeout boxes. Grow the radioactive food and radioactive takeout boxes and eat it with radioactive utensils. Yeah, I think we've, we're almost 100% stupid now. We, we reach saturation of idiot point. Has been used as animal feed, of course. We talked about that over the years, haven't we? That terrifies me to do stuff like that. And it's genocide. We can't sell it as Fukushima rice. No, they've been relabeling. It's, it's a billion pounds a year. So they just ship most of it to Canada. 55 countries banned it and 14 prefectures, not just the Fukushima prefecture, which is a massive zone, right? So having biomass come as a huge help. We can grow rice without worries, says the monster in the nuclear wasteland. Spreading down from the forest to slopes of the mountains to the ocean side, part of NAMI lies only four kilometers from the ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns. Yeah, being stupid is now like a duty in the nuclear industry. No, no, my son's stupider than yours. He moved back to Akuma, for goodness sakes, which provides, that's something you'll never hear, unfortunately, which provides jobs for many, including Abe's son and grandson. So why not poison your own loved ones? I think that's appropriate, though, that he got his, at least he got his son and grandson working there so that that uh, generic line doesn't survive. That kind of makes me a little bit giddy with happiness today. I get so many rare moments where I'm actually happy anymore. But having his son and grandson there, uh, so that particular lineage doesn't exist in the near future, that comforts me. The plant's chimneys are clearly visible from the beach. If you can see it, you can breathe it. Yes, and a lot of it, period can't escape it and, and you know like I don't really wish his son and grandson harm despite the fact it's not a bad idea if they those in particular can't reproduce considering how stupid their grandfather is NAMI residents first evacuated inland on March 12th but as the radiation levels rose were ordered out of town altogether a little more than the clothes they wore. And you can't go back no more, no more, no more. Nobody was allowed back to live until 2017 when they had these little sections in the nuclear wasteland itself where you weren't allowed to cross the streets. After decontamination efforts, they left tons of radioactive soil stored around the town for years, including in the fields across from his farms. Some 80% of the town's land currently remain off limits. And they're in there growing rice so they can make radioactive utensils and radio. Like, why though? Why, why not grow it somewhere else? Is that a stupid question or something? Apparently it is, actually. 
why grow it and why go into a nuclear wasteland and breathe all the radiation to make a, a paycheck? Can't you make a paycheck somewhere else not doing that? So the, the nuclear industry got a large percentage of useful idiots dumbed down to the point where I suppose I don't know. I shouldn't say anything, I guess. But they're in the nuclear wasteland, right? I can't reconcile that the nuclear industry lets people go back there. Which is why we got a poll tonight suggesting that nuclear universities and students have to work at the Fukushima nuclear meltdowns so they can't grow up and destroy Earth and all the species. Too late! They definitely already done that. It's called radioactive fallout. And nobody is immune from this disease, perpetual disease factory. Since 2017, eight companies have come in, including a cement plant, agricultural. Crazy enough. Biomass resin, whose tidy factory, tidy. Did you know Japanese were really tidy people? Tidy. The great trader, Dr. Helen Calicut. Well, let's just play it. She'll tell you how tidy, she's done hundreds of interviews where he explains how tidy the Japanese are, that they're so tidy that when you clean up, instead of looking like that, it looks like the building to your left. The original video is up in the top center. I put the two pictures there. Which one do you think is the real one? Let me ask you this. Uh, you've said that uh, if the spent fuel pool... Now, this is a radio interview. She's done this hundreds of times, so... She's going to lie and say it looks like the building to the left, not the building to the right. Well, number four collapses, that you would evacuate your family from Boston. I think we would ever know the truth of what's going on there. And the reason I ask is because we've seen coverage in the uh, national news media here in the United States from ABC News and others that uh, take video cameras in saying that they're being given exclusive access to number four in the removal of the fuel rods, which is said to have begun. Uh, and, and what we see in the, the video being shared here in America is pristine, a pristine interior building. It doesn't look like a building in which the top blew off in a hydrogen explosion. The Japanese are very tidy people and they have by robot control and by human beings removed the debris from the top of building four and it does look pristine. Well, there you go. How do you argue with that? I can't tell the difference. Can you, can you tell the difference? They both look pristine to me. Just kind of like, what? NAMI was hit by four disasters, the quake, the tsunami, the reactor, and rumors. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that again. That was too much fun. NAMI was hit by four disasters. The quake, the tsunami, the reactor accident, and, you know, a.k.a. nuclear, multiple nuclear meltdowns. Oh, and rumors about radiation. So the president of the biomass resin in Fukushima, who's making radioactive uh, dinnerware and boxes to put the food in. I mean, he's not a maniac. It's a total rumor. Eighty percent of the town is off limit, but it's a rumor, right? Eighty percent of that town is off limit. You can't go, can't cross the street, can't go down the road, can't go up this street, that street, all most of the streets. But it's it's radiation is a rumor. Grown food in a nuclear wasteland is an ugly fucking rumor, Dana. The plastic isn't biodegradable. Using rice cuts to petroleum products involved. And growing more rice in NAMI reduces atmospheric CO2. Radiation is CO2. 
Radiation is what is global warming. Let me explain it to you. This, this is not very difficult, by the way. You got a plume covers the entire planet. It does. And this one is twenty six days or something, or twenty days. So you got a plume. It, it never stopped coming out. So eventually, it covers everything, right? Now it's from the ocean floor to the upper troposphere and higher, right? To outer space of, of invisible plume and radiation. It's pulsing energy every second, and every day you add to it, it never goes away. Well, every day you got uh, a thousand fuel pools worldwide hemorrhaging radiation emissions on a, on a level that would terrify you into the atmosphere into the environment, into the oceans, lakes, the rivers, into the air, into most nuclear power plants surrounded by farms. And, but you're doing that every day. Every day, at some point, you read critical mass. you got so much, it's pulsing energy every second, almost at the speed of light, but it never stops producing. And so the planet has to get hotter and hotter and hotter, right? It's called, we call it global warming. That's the cover story for 80 years of radioactive fallout. Okay? But, but, atomic contamination expert. Atomic contamination expert. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> atomic contamination expert said, Royce naturally takes up little radioactive cesium. No, he said cesium, sorry. This is, I named the show tonight Batshit Crazy because every story is like Batshit Crazy. Everybody that they mention are Batshit Crazy in every way possible. Not just one way, but every way. It's like they're aliens, right? It makes sense if they were aliens because they hate all species and they just lie as if, no, what, radiation... But there's eighty percent of the town you can't go to. Yeah, but that doesn't that's that's not in the little section where we're growing the food that we're gonna turn into utensils. That's a rumor. Fear iron. And there's people that are making a living torturing me, right? Harassing me, monitoring me, makes a living doing it. And they, they know what they're doing, I hope, they know what they're doing is wrong, right? That they can go get a real job somewhere. They don't need to censor the only person having the conversation. The only person who's asking a descending question. But that's what they get paid to do. And apparently I employ a lot of them. Additional testing has found no race above strict limits. Meaning the plastic is fine too. There's no safety issues. Toll, toll, fear mongering. Says associate professor at Kyoto Prefecture University. So you gotta, because you need a prefect, you need a professor to make your laws legitimate. A professor or what? Garbage cans? What is he? Professor or what? He's associate, even worse, he's just an associate professor. He's not really a professor. I really regret the rice isn't consumed due to safety rumors. Safety rumors. Rumors. But 80% of the town is off limit and you're, you're within four kilometers multiple nuclear reactors that are currently melting down. It currently uses only about 50,000 tons. 50,000 tons. The rest of the 1,500 tons needed is from elsewhere in the nuclear wasteland. But we'll buy more next year from Abe and his cooperative grown on freshly cleared fields in a nuclear wasteland. Biomass resident employs 10 people in NAMI, including a 20-year-old. Because that's a big deal. They got someone young there. That's, that's a pretty big deal, a 20-year-old. Including a 20 year old. Wow, that's amazing. I had no idea there was people 20 years old. I'm so confused right now. 
If you're confused also, congratulations, welcome. Welcome to hell. Welcome to... Yeah, it gets stupider. It never stops. Stupid is not just a word. I think it might be contagious if it's in the nuclear industry. That's why we got a poll tonight asking the important question that nobody asks anymore. This is pretty important. What is it? I don't know. Don't ask me. Should the nuclear universities and students work at the Fukushima nuclear meltdown so they can't grow up and destroy humanity and the 8 million species? I think it's a good idea. If that doesn't make sense, what freaking does? Right? Now, I worked too hard on Sunday. We had a two-hour, 45-minute show. It took all day to put it together. And it took several months right, to compile the information. And then the day before that, we traveled down because of dead dolphins and uh, in a snowstorm and daybreak. And uh, took two hours and 45 minutes to tell the whole story. And, and I pushed myself too hard. I still got a month or so to go to recover from three heart attacks, right? I'm doing good, though. I'm doing... But I uh, juice out. I'm still like I'm not running out of breath anymore, but I run out of. I push my body a little bit too hard. So we're gonna call it good tonight and pick up tomorrow night because we got another show just like tonight ready to go for tomorrow night. So why spoil it all? I can't do it all tonight anyway. And you can't rush the story. Is the sad thing about this? That's the craziest thing about this whole story is you can't rush you can't rush the story so I guess we'll pick it up tomorrow night because I'm pretty taxed right now and I can easily go and finish the show up but it's going to take probably another hour plus right and I We've got so much, I'm so much news already on the computer that I haven't read yet from the last couple of days. Might as well make a great show for tomorrow night if there's such a thing as a great show. I don't know if there is such a thing as a great show. The world's strangest show, anyway. That's, we can quantify that one. This is the world's strangest show. Last call for reality. Humanity's last stand. Earth's last stand. Humanity is just a fraction of the species, right? And we're obligated. You're obligated as a person alive. It's your watch. <sighs> okay, so let's close the poll down. Let's close the poll down. Having a hard time with a. Now, last night, the uh, arm that I had the surgery done, where he went up the vein, that was really bothering me, but it's doing good tonight. And today, I'm super happy about that. Last night, it was really painful for me. So, should nuclear. Universities, academics, professors, and uh, monsters to be students who grow up to be demons like the rest of them work at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown so they don't grow up and destroy humanity and the 8 million species. 10% said no. Bah. 10% said no. But everybody else seemed to figure it out, and we're grateful. Uh, ending poll. Now, we have 49 votes. Uh, James Luce donated 130 on Sunday show. That was fantastic. 
and we really appreciate it. It was great timing. Okay, so we'll call it a night and pick up tomorrow night where we left off because I haven't really got to the good stuff yet. And time you get through the news cycle tomorrow, it'll make for another great, for such a word, another. Well, they are great. These are the anniversary shows, and the anniversary shows are just like, wow. It's like a crash course and holy shit stuff. <laughs> Again, don't want to push myself too hard. Even though I feel like I'm doing pretty good, I'll pick it up tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night. And a great day tomorrow. Unless you're with the nuclear industry. And then, if you're with the nuclear industry, well, we disrespect you. And for everybody else, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. Have a great night and a great day. Take care. If you make it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Take care now. We'll see everybody tomorrow night for part two of what the fuck shit.